that was how I felt. There's some spirited conversation. We've got the juices flowing. Excellent. Uh, the short discussion with Michelle over here. She says, well, I came from a school that had no culture. Ha! Hush, hush. Simply an untrue. Every school has a culture. Over the discussion, we found out that the culture was simply one she did not feel a part of. The values did not coincide with her heart's spirit. <laughs> For example, would you like to share? A lot of ideas and no follow through, no implementation. Uh, I thought a lot of their ideas were good, but they just stopped there. They tried, but then it didn't go anywhere, and that's frustrating to me. When you see the potential of the school, so one of their norms was creativity and great ideas. The norm they were lacking to go along with that was follow through and results. Quite a problem. <laughs> There's no quick and simple way to change the culture or climate of schools. But long planning is more likely to produce change and more short-term facts. Now change theory refers to ideas that people have had that are incredibly obvious. But importantly, they wrote them down and put names to the ideas so that Oi and Miskel might have something to write about. <laughs> Three such theories are called the clinical strategy, the growth-centered change strategy, and the norm-changing strategy. Let's begin with the first. The clinical strategy is similar to the approach a doctor might take, and it's composed of five steps. Step one is to gain knowledge the organization's dynamics and relationships, perhaps using a tool such as the OHI, may be useful. I'm gaining knowledge of an organization from a tree. <laughs> In step two, we have the diagnosis. In the diagnosis, the problem is labeled something such as poor morale, or perhaps unilateral decision making. Let me see here, just relax, just relax, relax, let me, let me breathe. Call that breathing? Oops. Yay, now he can. I wasn't hearing anything. Well, shit, you don't have a heart. I don't know the line on that. Does he have? That was your line, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> After the diagnosis, we move on to the prognosis. In the prognosis, a judgment is laid down about the seriousness of the problem, and a solution is offered. This is straight out of the book. You see, what we've got to do here is this. <laughs> this is serious. That is my judgment. <laughs> Next we have the prescription in which the new change is finally implemented. Okay, my turn. You see, what we have to do here is replace our older custodial teachers with the younger humanistic teachers so we can alter our pupil control orientation. <laughs> that should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, after all of these steps, we finish with the evaluation in which the change has been monitored and success is measured. I give this change a 10! <laughs> a 4! A 10! Damn Russian judges. <laughs> Once again, the clinical strategy, a doctor's approach. We move on next to the growth-centered strategy. This requires the acceptance of four basic assumptions. And these assumptions must be accepted by the entire community. Assumption one, change is a property of healthy school organizations. I'm change. I'm school. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> Here the school has taken change 
The next step, the next assumption that must be agreed to by all, is that change does indeed have a direction. That, that way! way. <laughs> the third assumption is that change should imply progress. Oh, okay. No, get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm progressing. I'm implied. The <laughs> final assumption that must be agreed on by all is that teachers have the high potential for development and implementation of said change. I'm so high right now. Man, it's high potential. <laughs> that would be the growth strategy. And finally, the final of these change theories, we come to the norm changing strategy. It is a very complex process, ready? And it follows five steps. Step one, identify current norms. Step two, articulate the new direction of the organization. Step three, establish new norms. Step four, identify the gap between the current norms and the new norms. And step five, close the gap. Just change what you do. Indeed. Close the gap. Close In conclusion, gap. there is no real distinction between culture and climate. It just depends on who's the theorist and who wrote it down first. We need to understand what culture is. And we can look at culture through a layering structure in which the norms are founded on the values which are founded on the underlying assumptions. To change the culture, we must first understand the culture. And to do that, we can use a test, the OHI. Finally, there are three wonderful change theories, which all are common sense. That is our presentation, and we thank you for your attentive audience. Thank you.